here's where we're going to get. Beautiful graph there. I can see some lovely curves around. Um, very nice. Well, some. I want you to think with me. A simple, simple question, which is, what do you know about the derivative of this graph? Like, all we've got is the picture at the moment. We know that it doesn't fit like all of the laws of differentiation that we already know because it's just a different kind of function altogether, right? Um, it's not as though, like, if you just think about it, hmm, what would happen if I brought the coefficient out the front and then reduced it by what? It just is not happening, okay? Let's just think about it visually. Eddie, give me a suggestion. Um, well, the actually, before you go on talking, <clears throat> there's a lot of things to observe. Tell me one thing. Don't paint the whole picture for me. Okay. Just pick one thing out. Uh, gradient's always positive. Okay, fantastic. Number one, whatever the gradient function is, it had better be all above the axis because this is an increasing function for its entire domain. Number one, great. Someone give me another piece of information. It's increasing at a faster and faster rate. Okay, so number one, we already know it's going to stay positive, but it gets more and more positive as time progresses, right? Or I should say, as the x value increases because it's getting steeper steeper. You have a look at this end, it's, it's pretty flat, isn't it? Okay. Right, so we have always increasing, uh, so therefore the gradient's always positive. We have that it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Can you tell me anything else? Okay. It's never zero. Okay, it never ever hits zero, which is kind of just to make sure, it's like we mean it's always positive. We don't just mean it's not negative. We mean it's actually always positive. There's no part here, even though it gets quite flat, there's no part where it's actually flat where it actually stops increasing. Okay. Do we know anything else? Can you see anything else? Okay. Now, interestingly, the thing that you just described to me, the gradient function of this, always positive, never zero, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I asked you to describe the gradient function. It looks to me like you just described this function. All those three properties that you just mentioned, right? It's always positive, never hits the axis, that's what the asymptote is about, and it is increasing in value all the way. In other words, it seems like we're determining that the derivative of an exponential looks a heck of a lot like an exponential curve. Okay. So, we prove it to you, right? You can pop this if you like. Uh, no, that's not one. I want the remote. Just think I'm used to this. <coughs> there we go. You can pop this into Desmos if you like right now. Not that some of you need an invitation, but anyway. Um, what I've done is, I've plotted, and because I'm interested in like a few different graphs, not just one, okay, I've plotted a to the x, where a is a variable and I can muck about with it, okay? As you can see, it's there, it's my green line. Ooh, let me change that for you. Hold on. That's a bit easier to see. Okay. Um, it's that green line there. It's all freezing. Oh, yeah. Wait, why did I freeze it? Oh, I freeze it. There we go. Um, that green line is pretty visible, okay? Now, this doesn't look very exponentially to me. Why is that? Because my particular value for A at the moment is, what's well, 1, 1 to the power of anything, it's 1. So there's our flat line, okay? But as soon as we change things, and I encourage you to actually, actually put this into Desmos yourself so you can muck about with it and not just watch me muck about with it. As soon as I change values of A, things start to happen, okay? We see... Uh, let's just get those two. <laughs> Do you remember being a junior student and that came to get everywhere? Okay. That's not even a <laughs> It was Ryan. Nice. <laughs> Trust. Here is, yeah, you know what? This is not too bad, okay? So there's our two to the x, and you can see if I muck around with a, we're going from a lower value, which is right straight across, right? And the closer you get to one, the more it flattens out versus. The higher above, the more it gets steeper. Okay, so you get the idea. In fact, I'm going to go back. Okay, now, one of the handy things, I don't know if you've already <laughs> worked out that Desmos can do this for you, is um, we can calculate and therefore graph derivatives on this. Like, it'll just take them automatically. I think you've got to dig into, uh, I don't know, if, actually, has anyone tried? Can you just type D on the X? Can you just do that? If you can't, the place I went in, because I was lazy, was when you enter something, if you go to functions, you go to ABC. and if you go to, yeah, I think there's a, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, probably the most direct way is if you go into functions, miscellaneous, 
d or dx differentiate the operator is just right there. Okay? And you too can put in the derivative of whatever your function is, whatever you want. Okay? Can you? Can you, Brendan? Can you just yeah. type it? Yes, yeah, can you just type it? Okay. So you can use a um, use a backslash to do the division sign. Okay? Now watch as I get rid of all this keyboard business and plot our derivative. Okay? So sure enough, true to instinct, in fact I'll show you a bit more of it so you can see what that type is. <laughs> True enough, right? You can see that orange line there, the derivative of 2 to the x, looks exactly like the, the exponential function that we started with. However, you can see it's kind of underneath all the way, okay? I guess if we did our first principles and we checked it at all these different values, we could find out how much lower it is, but there you go, okay? Now, here's the really fun part. We're going to muck about with that a to the x again. But I want you to notice what's happening to the orange graph. You already know what's good, what the green graph is going to do. It's going to uh, become steeper or shallower. I want you to watch the orange graph. Okay, watch carefully. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Okay. Use words. What happened to the orange graph? How would you articulate it? It got, well, it's, it's, it's gone lower, hasn't it, right? And it's also gone shallower. Now, I stopped short of going all the way because I hope you can see there's some limiting, limiting behavior here, right? You actually know what's going to happen when I drag this all the way back to one where I started. What will happen? Yeah, if this is a horizontal line, the derivative will just be zero because it's, it's not increasing or decreasing, okay? But as I go the other direction, now let's see it. So all those values I showed you before, the gradient line, the gradient function was beneath the function came from, it's primitive, but now I've gone above. And I haven't gone very far, I'm up at 4.8, I just happen to um, cap off my values at 5, but you can go as far as you like, and you make the um, orange function as steep as you like. Okay, let's draw a conclusion from this, okay? All of the orange functions, what they share in common is that they're all derivatives, right? That are all exponentials just like they're primitives. So here's what I'm going to write, and you can pop this right beside me. The derivative of some exponential function, right, is essentially the same exponential function, but it's been kind of scaled vertically. Do you notice that? Scaled vertically. Like this one is higher at every point. Higher at every single point. And if I put it back down, you can see. Okay, our derivative now is lower at every point, so there's that same scale kind of thing happening. So what I conclude from this, I'm making a visual argument here, is that the derivative of an exponential function is another exponential function, and it's scaled vertically in some way. Okay, so I'm going to say where k is some real number. I don't know anything about what that real number is yet, but I know it is a number. Like, that's all that's happening. There's no extra wiggles that have been introduced into the graph. No stationary points, no change in behavior. Essentially, this is what's going on but we modify it. Okay. Now we saw for some of the graphs, the derivative, the orange line is below, and for others, it's above. That makes mathematicians sort of raise their eyebrows and say, well, sometimes it's below, sometimes it's above. There must be a point where it's exactly equal. Now, I've only done it to the, um, the nearest tenth unit, so that's why I can't get the actual number that I'm after. But those are pretty bang on. Right? There is a particular value where when you differentiate, you don't just get back something pretty close. You get back the actual graph itself that you started with. Okay? That's a particular number, some value of a. We give that number the name because it's all about exponentials. We call it e. So we define... We define e to be that number such that if you spin this experiment out and you try and find that exact point where they line up perfectly, um, which you guys have met the number e before, it's 2.718281828 and so on, okay? Um, it's a bit more rigorous to prove that that number is what it is, but you can see it already. Like, you know I'm in the right ballpark, and that's what I've um, shown, okay? So just to review, this is what I argued visually, just by mucking about it and seeing what's happening. 
This, I've defined, right? Is the number such that this happens? Okay, because I know it happens somewhere, so that's my definition.